All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, our investigations into the alleged theft of two rings from an Indrapilly jewellery shop on Friday are continuing. The circumstances surrounding this matter are very unusual, and the procedures required to recover the rings uh, have throughout presented a range of operational, health and safety, and welfare issues. The QPS consulted with medical practitioners regarding which procedures should be adopted to ensure the safety and well-being of the accused and those collecting the samples to be examined. A process using medical bags was used in an attempt to recover the rings. Recent medical tests have confirmed the presence of one ring inside the man who remains in police custody. The second ring remains outstanding after having been passed by the man and inadvertently disposed of. All attempts by the QPS to locate the ring so far have not been successful and at this time we do not expect it will be recovered. The circumstances surrounding the loss of the ring are the subject of an ongoing Ethical Standards Command investigation. The QPS regrets this incident and will confidentially discuss matters of compensation with the owners of the ring and will explore and consider any further opportunities regarding compensation through the courts. QPS procedures in relation to this type of matter are the subject of ongoing urgent review to ensure that a similar loss of property does not occur in the future. Procedures for the collection of the second ring have already been amended accordingly. Uh, happy to take questions, but can I just a couple of caveats on what I might be able to say. The first is obviously the matter of the original theft is before the court, which will limit what I might be able to say. And the second is that we have an ongoing Ethical Standards Command investigation which has not finished and that will also have some impact on what I'm able to say. How have you changed procedures waiting for the second ring? Uh, we have uh, decided we're going to use uh, specialist equipment that is available through our customs colleagues at the Brisbane Airport. We're also urgently investigating the opportunity for us to uh, install similar equipment in the Brisbane Watch House here for our own use in the future. Is that a clear toilet? Uh, it's a specially designed toilet uh, to ensure that in these sorts of circumstances uh, matter can't be passed covertly. Beg your pardon? No, we believe that it may have been uh, inadvertently uh, disposed of in uh, one of two waste bags that were uh, given to us by the prisoner and uh, delivered as part of the normal uh, uh, waste collection. Uh, from the Brisbane City Watch House. So in short, the spin aside, you lost it? Beg your pardon? You lost it? Yeah, it would appear at this stage that uh, it's inadvertently been lost, yes. You mean those bags weren't searched or weren't searched? Is that what you think happened, that the bags weren't searched? Yes. Um, the officers involved in this were obviously confronted with some rare and unusual circumstances. They put procedures in place in good faith which they thought would lead to the recovery of these items. Uh, in hindsight it appears there's been a gap in these procedures and that's allowed the ring to be inadvertently lost. How, how were the bags disposed of? Uh, they are put initially in a biohazard bin and then transferred to the general uh, refuse bin at the watch house and collected on a daily basis by the contractor. Do you think Mark Watts knew that he had passed one of them? Uh, your, you know, you're talking about good faith. You under the impression he would say he had delivered one bit of Yeah, that's still part of the ongoing uh, Ethical Standards Command investigation, but one possibility is that uh, he knew he had passed it and didn't alert police to that. The other possibility is uh, he was unaware or unsure, and uh, they're, they're the options. Just, just to clarify, was it not somebody's job to go through what had been passed and check just in case? I mean, was he to know to have gone through his own waste that there was a ring in there? Or would, it, would it not appear that it was somebody's job to do that? The responsibility for the uh, collection and retention of exhibits always remains with the investigating police. And they, they didn't get through it? Uh, not on this occasion, no. Are you still able to allege, using the x-ray for example, that the two rings were in the accused possession, so to speak? Absolutely. Without, uh, I say, with the caveat that this matter is still before the court, uh, this will have no detriment to the prosecution of this matter. We will still be able to recover one of the two rings, and the X-ray uh, is very clear that, that was taken on Friday night that there are t there were two rings inside the accused person. So, do you know what ring has been lost out of the two? 
Uh, no. Was there any possibility of him smuggling the ring out? Does, does he have visitors or anything like that? No. He's had no visitor contact. He's been under uh, constant uh, CCTV surveillance throughout. We have reviewed all of that footage, examined and searched every place that he has been, cells, cars, and are uh, uh, confident as we can be that uh, the ring has unfortunately been inadvertently uh, lost in the, in the waste disposal process. Can somebody be stood down over this? The, the Bear in mind there was, two, there was two tasks to find both rings and one's been lost. Somebody's got to be held responsible. Well, that's why we instigated an, an urgent and immediate uh, Ethical Standards Command investigation to look at all the circumstances of this, including whether there had been any possibility uh, that the ring could have been stolen by any person. Very satisfied that hasn't occurred. When the uh, internal investigations report is uh, concluded, we'll look at the recommendations then. Will he be taken to a customs facility to use this new toilet? He, he has been for the last several days, been taken to that customs facility. Held like for a couple of hours each day and then brought back? Or no, for the majority of the day, for as, as long as possible each day. Where's that? Where's the customs facility? Uh, at, the, uh, at the airport. Yeah. How embarrassing is this for police, this lot? It's not embarrassing at all for me because the officers concerned have acted in good faith. You know, this is a rare and difficult set of circumstances. No one sets out to lose evidence. It's in the best interest of the investigating officers to retain all evidence. So they've done the best they could in the circumstances. Unfortunately, there was a gap in the processes they put in place. In hindsight, do you wish you had kept the bags of each waste that had been passed to be able to go back through them, trawl through it? Absolutely. You know, the benefit of hindsight is we look at all of our procedures and work out how we can do things better. Uh, that's We've been doing uh, policing for nearly 150 years in the state and it's a constant process of of looking at circumstances and uh, amending our, our procedures as we need to. Was it occupational health and safety that kept the officers from going through those bags, those two bags you believe the ring was present in? Well, there are obviously health and safety concerns that uh, have to come into play with the treatment of matter like that, but, but there are options for, for the material to be examined off-site in other places, and that's what we'll be doing in the future if we have to, if we find ourselves in similar circumstances. How often do you engage with an alleged criminal in, in good faith? It just seems a, a bit of a bizarre way to, to do it. Well, that was a judgment call made by the investigating officers. They were closest to the case. They'd spoken to the man. They formed a judgment. Uh, they put a procedure in place they thought would be adequate. As I say, they acted in good faith. With the benefit of hindsight, there was just one step missing in the check, checking process, which, uh, which would have prevented this happening. So did, did he know he passed it? Uh, we're not 100 per cent sure on that. They thought he was cooperating and would retrieve and return the ring. And, and uh, that's my understanding of the arrangements that, that were entered into originally, yes. Because he obviously has an interest uh, in retrieving, returning the rings, his bail is conditional on it. So, and he, uh, so what day do you think that actually happened? Uh, we think it happened over last weekend. Is, um, what are doctors saying? Is he in good health? Is it the ring stuck anywhere where it shouldn't be? Uh, he is in good health. He's monitored every day, x-rayed every day. We're in contact with the doctors every day about next steps and, and uh, how we can you know, progress the procedure. And uh, we're, we're taking medical advice day by day. Is he being given a special diet to speed up the process? Um, he, uh, we take advice from the medical professionals, yes, and, and uh, on a day-to-day -day basis we look at uh, what options can safely be employed. Uh, with his consent, uh, to try and uh, and get to the point where you know the ring is second ring is passed. How does this affect his bowel conditions now? Obviously, you said that it was conditional that both of these rings were returned. Um, one's now been lost. He appears often act in good faith with you, so he's a party to this going missing. Is this going to affect his case? Uh, look, I can't comment on that specifically, but can I say that? Uh, the responsibility, as I said earlier, the responsibility for the custody of the exhibits lies not with him but with us. Has he expressed remorse as his, as his course of actions or any kind of regret that um, how his life has been spent the last week? Uh, I don't have any information to that effect. Can, can I just be, be really clear? The officers were expecting this man to tell them when he had passed the ring so they knew which bag to search. And that's why they didn't search those bags. Uh, that was the uh, the arrangement that they entered into with this person, yes. But wouldn't it be clear that there's a possible gap in that process? Well, um, with the benefit of hindsight, 
it's easy to sit here and say, yes, we should have conducted a secondary search regardless. And uh, that's uh, one of the procedural gaps that we've now fixed. But it doesn't even seem that there's a benefit of hindsight. Surely it would be common sense that if a bloke's passed something over to you that could be in there, I'm sure he hasn't gone through it with his hands to have a look, that there probably needs to be some sort of x-ray to determine if there's a, a ring in there. As I said, uh, the officers approached this in good faith. They thought the procedures they put in place were adequate. Uh, we can now say with some certainty that there was a gap in the procedures which we've closed. As a senior officer, what is your opinion of this stuff up? Uh, I, as I said before... Um, you must be livid. Uh, as I said before, the officers acted in good faith. They have an interest in trying to recover the material. They did their job uh, as they, they saw fit. Uh, and uh, as I say, with the benefit of hindsight, we'll do it in a different way. How long has the, the customs, um, that arrangement with customs been going on? Has that been since he was arrested or only in the last in recent days? Customs uh, and our federal colleagues, as you know, have far more uh, experience in this field than we do. They deal with it on a far more regular basis, so they have the facilities available uh, for their use in, in circumstances where people come in uh, secreting contraband. For the Queensland Police, it's a relatively unusual circumstance. So has that been something that's only happened the last few days or, or after it was realised that the, the ring, that first ring went missing or, or been in place since he was arrested? Or? No, we, uh, we took him to the customs facility and started to make use of that once we became aware that uh, the first ring uh, was not there. And can you think of any other cases that are similar to this where police have had to do anything like this? Uh, Uh, look, not in, in the QPS and not in recent memory of the QPS. This is more uh, routine for our federal colleagues, as I say. Uh, the fact is, if exhibits have been lost, that's not an unusual circumstance in itself. Exhibits occasionally go missing uh, in a range of circumstances, but this is rather unique in terms of the circumstances in, in which we find ourselves. He might be ordered to repay the owners. Uh, we'll certainly look at our options. Um, as I said, we'll, we are in discussions with the owners of the ring about uh, whether they uh, wish to make a claim on us in the future. If they do, we'll consider that on a confidential basis. But we retain our rights also in the criminal court process. Isn't that his responsibility, though? I mean, this is a guy who stole the ring, allegedly, and then swallowed it. How can he be responsible for something that he did? Well, we'll need to take legal advice on that. But uh, as I said, uh, we do retain a responsibility for not only uh, his safety and well-being while he's in our custody, but also um, the recovery and safe custody of exhibits, and which is effectively what this is. It's a piece of evidence, an exhibit. Thanks. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry. I, I was just going to say, this whole saga would be a fairly good warning for people thinking that this cause of action might be something that they're trying. I'm sure, uh, without having spoken to him, that uh, he probably regrets it based on all the circumstances so far. It's, uh, it's not a pleasant way to spend a week of your life, and it's not over yet. And for you, is this one of the stranger cases you've been involved in in your career? I would have to say, yeah, this is fairly unique. As I say, the QPS doesn't often get involved in cases where people have swallowed things to prevent evidence being recovered by us that's more familiar in the federal sphere so yeah it's it's pretty unusual for the QPS. Has this gentleman been observed as he's been passing the store? I mean is, has there been a, a third party there who's been watching what's been taking place? He's been on, under constant CCTV surveillance since he first came into the watch house. Is there a time limit? Like I know earlier in the week doctors were saying that it, it wouldn't be unusual for it to take seven days for him to pass um, the exhibit. Yeah. What happens if you haven't passed it by a case we're in daily contact with uh, the medical authorities and the suspect, and we're reviewing it on a day-by-day -day basis. And uh, one of the many possibilities might be that we may need to look at some more uh, significant medical intervention, but we're just playing that out on a day-by-day -day basis. Like surgery? Possibly. What was your response when you learnt of the losing of the ring? Uh, it was uh, an unusual set of circumstances, and uh, that's why I ordered an immediate investigation by the Ethical Standards Command just to get a full appreciation of what had happened since the time we took this uh, suspect into custody until that time, uh, to uh, make sure that there was no possibility that uh, the ring had been uh, stolen, and uh, that's clearly not the case. When would that report be uh, passed back to you when will you know the uh, been completed? Uh, I'm hoping it will have a report within the next few weeks.
there's no chance that the contract is pinched it or it's gone missing on that end? No. No, we're fairly confident that it's probably under uh, a huge amount of landfill at a refuse site and uh, will not ever be recovered. What was the, what was the value of the ring? Uh, well, the value of the ring is a confidential matter between uh, ourselves and uh, and the owner. Are we talking more than 10? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to speculate. And you are, and you are confident this is going to have no bearing on prosecuting this site? Absolutely. I'm very confident that it will have no detrimental impact on the prosecution. Can I just get a confirmation of when he was taken to the AFP uh, so it was uh, the practice was changed? The customs facility? Yeah. yeah not the AFP. Sorry, customs. customs. Uh, that was on Wednesday. It was on Wednesday. So you believe the ring went missing on, over the, on, at the weekend? Yes. Yeah. And he was taken on Wednesday too? Yes. So it only became clear on Wednesday that the second ring was not... It only became clear on Tuesday night that we had to get the man re-x-rayed. He was complaining of uh, cramps, so we had him re-x-rayed late Tuesday night. That's when it became. That's when we had clear evidence that the second ring was not there, and we've taken the steps I've outlined immediately after that. Why has it taken until today to notify the broader public? Uh, because up until yeah, yesterday afternoon, we we were exploring all options to try and recover the ring searches of all places and we got to the point where we uh, believe the ring is under landfill at a uh, at a particular site. Yesterday afternoon we finally got some costings for a search of that site. It became clear that uh, the costings of, for doing a search would be completely cost prohibitive and not in the public interest. So effectively at that point we, we had exhausted all of our opportunities to try and recover it. Can we ask what those costings were? Um, uh, significantly more than the value of the ring. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can we just get some cutaways? Thank you.